Hi, I'm Lee Tushler with Machine Design Magazine. We're here at Carnegie Mellon University with Mike Murphy, a mechanical engineering PhD student, who's going to give us an update on what he's been doing with wall climbing robots. Uh, what we have here is a uh, robot that's inspired by the gecko lizard. Uh, and it's able to climb walls and, and surfaces. Uh, and uh, it's a um, fully wireless, tetherless robot. Uh, it's got onboard power, um, microcontroller, and communications, wireless communications. Uh, and the special thing about this robot is that its feet are uh, made, uh, the, the attachment mechanism on the feet is uh, specialized structures, very similar to the gecko's foot, uh, except that these are synthetic materials. Uh, they're very small microfibers with uh, specialized tips. And they're, what, what they're able to do is to get into the small roughness on surfaces and make good contact and using van der Waals forces stick to that surface and, and climb. Uh, the idea here is to make a robot that's very agile and can climb on sur all, sur all surfaces. Um, uh, so climbing from a wall to a ceiling, climbing much like an animal can do. Uh, and the challenges are right, right now are climbing on uh, surfaces that are very different. So we can have specialized feet that can climb on a smooth surface. We can have specialized feet that can climb on a rough surface, but having a one foot that can climb on all different surfaces is actually quite difficult. Uh, another challenge is uh, overcoming the problem of contamination with some kind of self-cleaning foot or a, a foot that kind of resists contamination. Um, and also, we want to miniaturize our robots. Uh, very small animals are much better climbers. Basically, all insects can climb really well uh, and stick on very smooth surfaces and, and climb on rough surfaces. Larger animals have a harder time. Basically, they need to use claws most of the time. And the largest animal that can climb uh, smooth surfaces is a, is a gecko, which is only, can only get up to a few hundred grams. Uh, so we, we want to miniaturize as well so we can increase our performance. Um, however, at the same time, uh, the, things that we kinda, the, the kind of things we'd like to carry, like sensors, other kinds of payload, don't always shrink with the robot. And a very small robot, although it can be a good climber, isn't going to be able to carry a big camera. So we need to find that kind of optimum size where the robot can carry something useful, but also be a good climber. Can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, foot material? So the feet on this robot are inspired by the gecko lizard. Um, and these pads actually, uh, although you can't really see it by eye, if you look under a microscope or a scanning electron microscope, you can see that the, the, the feet are made up of uh, thousands of very small fibers, very small hairs, vertically standing. And each of those fibers has a spatula type tip, a wider tip. And um, just like the animal, these, uh, these fibers can go in to surface roughness, make a high number of contacts, and using van der Waals forces, they can stick to a surface. Um, even though van der Waals forces are generally weak, uh, multiplying by thousands or millions of contacts, um, you can create a very large uh, surface adhesion and carry the robot on even something smooth like acrylic or glass, and something even rougher if it has a small surface roughness. So the robot uh, can easily climb 90 degrees, like walls. Uh, and the, uh, this configuration can also uh, climb on ceilings, but if the robot's too heavy, uh, it can have some problems. But um, the, if, if miniaturized, this design should be able to climb on ceilings. Uh, so it can also make transitions between different planes, uh, from a wall to a wall, from a floor to a wall, uh, even from a wall to a ceiling. So how much of a load could a, a robot really carry before it uh, would let go from the wall? The, the payload capacity of the robot is based on a couple of factors. One is the area of the foot pads. We can make larger or smaller foot pads. Um, but also the interaction with the foot pads and the, materi and the material it's climbing on. If it's climbing on a rougher surface, it's much more difficult to, to, to cling on. Uh, but if it's climbing on a smoother surface, it's actually easier. So uh, for different surfaces, you're going to have different payload capacities. And one of the things that we, we try to do is to keep the payload capacity high because the robot, um, if it falls, it's kind of catastrophic. So uh, we need to have a kind of large safety factor. Uh, so determining the payload depends on how long do you want to be on the wall for um, and how, how, how important it is that you don't fall. And specifically for the example you have in your hand here, about how much, how much can that really carry? This robot can probably handle uh, 20 or 30 grams of payload, um, depending on how dirty the foot pads are. When, when, they, when we first put the foot pads on, they're nice and clean. They're actually very sticky and, and almost to the point where the robot can't peel its feet off and you can carry a high payload. But as the robot climbs around a little bit, some contamination particles and dust gets on, get onto the feet. And uh, without cleaning them, uh, the performance degrades and your, your payload capacity drops.